i5 7th gen this is a mini pc he says well his wife says that when she presses the button the light comes on and now she presses the button the light doesn't come on so therefore the button must be faulty <laughs> <laughs> If only such a thing was always true. I mean, maybe it is, but I mean, how you get to like, I press the button, the light doesn't come on, therefore it must be the button. It's kind of like saying, I turn the key in the car and it doesn't start. It must be the key itself, yeah. I don't get it, I just don't get it. Yeah, I don't think anybody would actually say that, yeah. Hi guys, welcome back to Learning Electronics Repair. So at the end of the last video, we had the little HP mini PC that won't switch on. Let's see if we can fix it. Okay, so this has a faulty switch, the customer tells me. As I mentioned, this is sort of coming away, so <laughs> who knows. Little uh, i5 V Pro 7th gen. I think the first thing, I'll actually just check the top office and figure out why this is kind of coming apart. In fact, no, actually I won't because it's just that bit. No, this is kind of like as well. Uh, okay. Let's see what it does. This has a strange, it probably isn't strange actually, it's probably like a, yeah, it's like a HP laptop supply very similar <laughs> in fact these are hp there you go let's check the power pack first yeah start with some basics here guys yeah go for the basics this is the sort look you see this has like an outer connection here then like an inner sleeve you can see it's in there it's shiny and then the pin so the outer and the inner sleeve is the actual supply voltage and the pin is like a sense pin okay voltage sense multimeter well it looks like they've got a full power supply Nothing coming out of it. Uh, try again. Yeah, nothing got power supply. Hmm. Actually, I might not have had this pulled in all the way into the uh, main socket. Let's just try again. Another go. Oh, we do have a power supply. Okay. My bad. Right. So, I've probably got a lead to connect this to actually my bench power supply, but let's just try it here. So, she is correct. When she presses the button, nothing happens. So, let's just get inside this. Well, guys. To open this, you have to uh, just slide this thing into this unlock position and hit it a few times forwards and it just comes off. A little bit of like, brute force, really. So we have an SSD in here. And guess what? The customer's right. The switch is broke. <laughs> so I'm going to have to eat my words here, guys. I'm going to have to take back everything I've just said about this, about customers, yeah, about, well, it doesn't switch on so the switch must be broke yeah and here's me taking the mick yeah and inviting you guys who've already commented below i hope and now what do we find the switch is broke <laughs> i'm sure it did that on purpose because this is on video okay guys who's an idiot right let's see if i can fix it okay so we have all bits of HP mini computer on the desk and this is the motherboard so without doubt the button is faulty you can see down there what's happened to it I think this just uh, comes off actually this thing yeah oh, something fell out oh that's part of the switch yeah that fell out and that's what we have let's have a look under the microscope so we have a 
kind of like metal housing for the switch you can see it attached to the board and it looks like it's kind of like spread outwards yeah. and the other part of the switch has fell out it's not this thing and the buttons fell out but probably that button is kind of like no it doesn't wedge into the housing uh, you can see before it was kind of inset so that's the problem or at least one of the problems the other problem is i haven't got a switch like that there's another part of it yeah and there's the buttons that's the other part of it so i have a few options here first one is ask my friend debt who's around the corner because debt probably has more buttons than anybody else in the world debt left you called master <laughs> <laughs> hey guys Hey nerds, and that hey, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. So we, this is the switch. That's the bit that came off the motherboard. Ugh. Yeah. So I just turn the damn thing over. Yeah, it's there. Then that's the bit that goes inside it, like a little springy oh dome thing, and that's the button. And you can see what's happened. It's like uh, that was just sheared off. Well, no, it's not sheared off. See, this is kind of like sprung outwards or something. The frame. Uh -huh. Ooh. So I'm wondering, do you have a button like that? No. No, no I didn't. It's so specialised. Yeah. So I have two options here. One's try to put the thing back together mm. and then spring these things back inwards and then maybe a bit of glue or something to stop them springing out uh, again. Just as a thought. Yeah. Can we set the BIOS so it wakes up on a key press, on an external keyboard, so you don't need this button? That's another damn good idea. And the other option is to effectively just tag some wires off and just like leave her a button. <laughs> that would be my choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to try to do, actually, guys, I'm going to try to rebuild the switch if I can. Mm. And if I can't, we have a plan B and a plan C. Yeah. Nice one, Dad. Good one. Well, there's the housing. There's the frame. This is the optical microscope. I can work better under this one. So, are those components under there? Yeah, there's like uh, some. No, that's where, that's where it's ripped off from. It looks like it. So, I think I'll try unsolder this metal frame and see if I can put the switch back together and solder it back in again. This shouldn't be too difficult to get out of, don't think. I could use hot air here, but I'm actually going to use a soldering iron. There's like a little LED there, and there's a capacitor on the other side of the board, just behind here, so I don't really want to get this area too hot. So we'll put some flux on, we'll put some leaded solder on. And I'll try and just literally lift this thing out of the board. I think this might work and we will soon find out. So we've got some solder in on here. I can always clean the excess solder off later, it's not a problem. See if we can actually get this out. Just literally get very hot and let's see if it lifts off the board. Yeah, I think it's gonna come. A little bit tricky just to get a hold of, try again. Come on, that's it, okay. So there's our metal frame. I'll just take a bit of uh, braid while it's nice and warm. And let's just see if we can clean this up a little bit. I might have to put it into like a helping hand. You know the thing with crocodile clips and a little magnifying glass, but let's see. So some more flux on the braid this time. 
script for this isn't going to stick to the soldering iron. I'm going to find out. Try this. Yeah, that worked really well. So let's see if we can actually put this thing together. So this is the insert for the switch. I need to get it the other way up. Okay. That goes in there. <laughs> that went well. Okay, that goes in there. Then we have the button. So I'm pretty sure the thin bit comes inside this actually. Let's see. Yeah, that must do. That presses into the centre of that. Okay, so that goes in there. Let's see if it actually works. So is this the right way round? I'm not totally sure this is the right way round. Go the other way. What like that? Okay. And then we need the bracket. So <laughs> I should have checked first which side the contacts are. But actually, I can see they're on this end. So this must be the bottom. So this goes over that. I think I have to effectively spread these little sides back out a little bit to get this to go on. Yeah, like that. I don't know how well this is going to come on the microscope, guys, but this is what we get. It works well for me because I'm looking down the microscope, of course. Right, so that goes back over here. Okay. Now see if I can get the whole thing into position. Well guys, that just wasn't successful. I ended up breaking a couple of bits off this. I could get one side in, but I couldn't get the other side in, okay. So that's not going to help us. So we'll have to go with one of the other plans. There are three connections on here where the switch connected. So we can say that effectively the outer two will be connected together. Yes, they are. That, yeah, because here as well, this is ground. Okay, and then the middle one will be the connection that's made when the switch is pressed. So. Yeah, that means like a diode junction or something at the moment, yeah. And we just need to make a connection from any of these to that centre pin. I'm going to tag a couple of short wires on here. So I'm actually just going to lash a switch onto this for now. So the customer can actually use the little PC. And then the next thing will be trying to find an actual proper replacement switch. And there we have two wires tagged on here. There's practically no voltage on this. There's no danger in doing this i'll put this back together i'll just tag a switch on this and then hopefully the customer can use this at least and we can see whether we can actually make a proper yeah, repair of it afterwards i put a bit of hot snot glue over the wires i noticed that i've just caught the insulation on this blue one actually but it's under the hot snot this is the ground lead so I mean, there's ground all around here anyway. It's not going to go anywhere. I'm really not too worried about that at all. It's the other one, which is the on signal. And anyway, if that touched the ground, all was happening was the PC would switch on or possibly switch off if it thought you'd hold a button in. So I'm not too bothered about that. This is a temporary fix and I think that's okay. Comment. The other reason I put a bit of hot snot on here is to make it difficult for them to rip the pads off the board. Okay, if they pull on these wires. Okay, guys, so 
you can call this a bodge job if you like, but I think it's the only way easily, or probably the easiest way I can get this thing to actually work for the moment so the customer can use it. Let's try it. You can see the screen there, so this is a bit like hot wiring the car, yeah, so. Yeah, you saw the light flash there. There, got it. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, it's booting up. You can see on the screen there. It's asking to do a hard drive check and various things. I'm just going to, uh, well, I don't actually have a keyboard attached to it, so I won't bother go further with that. But this is basically working. Let's see if I can switch it off again using these wires. So if we just... Now, quick touch, and you can see the light flashed. Yeah, that's how I got it started. Yeah, you can see it's loading from the hard drive or something. Yeah, protected by HP Sure Start. This time it's going to load Windows by the looks of it, actually. Okay, so we're at the login screen. I won't go into the customer's data. I'll just let it finish reading the hard drive. Now I'll try and shut it down using these wires, the equivalent of holding the button in basically. So yeah, it looks like it's pretty much done what it was doing now. Right, so we'll shut these two wires together. It should shut down. Yeah, it's gonna shut down. Okay. There we go. So this is functioning and I think that's the best I can do for the moment. I'll put the top on. I'm gonna I think I'll actually probably use a bit of hot melt and just glue the button on the side here, then at least they can work it. So let's just get that done. And there we have it. So it's not the world's tidiest job, but I mean, it's on there, yeah. And because it's hot melt glue, it's easy to get this off if I can get the correct button. So let's just test it again. Quick touch and it should start. I guess I can probably fit this piece on as well, actually. Yeah, it clips on. Okay. We're in Windows and then just a long press and it should shut down. Yep, shut down. So, wow. <laughs> what do you think, guys? I mean, the point of this is sometimes you have to bodge the job to fix it. Can I charge on for this? I'm right, I'm going to charge on for this because they need this machine working. Okay, we need to find the correct button to make it look good, but it won't actually affect the functionality at all. So it's down to the customer. I'm going to charge him for fixing this and quote him for replacing the button as well and then see what they say. But I'm 100% sure that you want to talk about this down there, yeah? So get into the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've done similar jobs. Do you approve of this sort of approach or don't you? Yeah, I mean... Be, you know, honest, I can take it, yeah? So, I look forward to hearing from you, and I also look forward to seeing you all again soon on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.